Welcome back to Newsmakers. We are with Superintendent Dave Cliff. There has been a rising incidence of attacks on police officers, not just uh, uh, in Canterbury, but around New Zealand. It's becoming an all too familiar headline in the news. Um, and I saw a story in the press quite recently suggesting that Canterbury police are being attacked at twice the rate they were 10 years ago. What do you attribute that to? It's very difficult to, to answer that simply. It's not just police uh, the subject to these attacks. We're also noticing the same thing with groups that previously were not the subject of assault. So, for example, ambulance officers, when they arrive at a scene, firemen, when they're trying to put out a fire, um, doctors and nurses in the emergency department of the hospital. So it seems to be this general erosion in uh, respect for authority or positions of authority, and, it's, uh, and the result is more assaults. But um, precisely why it is, I don't know. Once again, it is most often linked to intoxication. A very seldom uh, will we have our officers being attacked by someone who's stone cold sober. Mm. It's usually related to either intoxication or um, psychiatric related issues. Yeah. How does the police try and rekindle a renewed sense of authority? Well, I think one of the things that we're definitely focusing on is our visibility, um, being out in the community, being seen, talking to, talking to people. So it's not just good enough to be walking down the street. We also want our officers to interact with people and have conversations and talk to them. So, you know, the slow, methodical uh, talking to the community is what we need to do. Now, I think that's part of it. But, but the broader issue of... Um, how do you get respect for authority? I mean, it's one that we're dealing with as our teachers and as I said, you know, any other, any other number of um, groups within the community. Mm. I have heard Greg O'Connor from the Police Association say a few times, we need a bit of fear to be there in mm. terms of how people regard the police. You need that fear factor, which of course is not politically correct. Um, is there anything wrong with a bit of fear? Um, I don't know if fear is the, the right word. Um, for example, is respect the same as liking? I don't think it is. We mm. do want people to respect us, but they don't necessarily have to like us. Um, but I, I don't know if it's fear so much as you often find that people fear being caught. So having a high likelihood that if someone commits an offence, they're going to be caught, mm. we think is important for deterring offending. The Police Association, Sir Greg O'Connor, has been agitating for greater access to firearms. And I get the impression that he feels that um, the prospect is growing closer to becoming a reality in New Zealand. Should we seriously consider it? An uh, openly armed police force? Um, I think, the, again, it's a very much a public debate. When we looked at what happened in Australia, we have all the states in Australia uh, armed services. All the staff there carry a, um, a service um, pistol but they didn't make a, con a conscious decision to do it. If you go back historically, the armed militias, or I think what, what the early descriptions of police in New Zealand were, they were armed. And, and at some point there was a conscious decision made that we wouldn't be and follow the uh, UK model where they're not also. But again, um, as times change, these things are always under review. We can give our staff more access. One of the things we're just doing is training our staff on the use of tasers, which is another non-lethal option, which we think is an excellent one. Um, but these things are always under review. Does it bother you that the United Nations considers uh, the use of tasers as a form of torture? Um, yeah, I, I can understand the rationale for that. For us, the use of a non-lethal option is always going to be better than using lethal force, and in some situations that's the only option we have. People in some cases think that OC spray, pepper spray, is a panacea that will always stop an offender. It mm. won't. Some occasions it will and others it won't, particularly those who are drug or drug affected or drug affected. But the taser, um, because it paralyzes muscles, um, can always stop an individual from doing anything to attack either themselves or someone else. The great thing about it is there are no lasting consequences. Um, as in someone does not end up with a broken bone, for example, if, the, if they're struck, and of course if they ended up with a, a gunshot wound, that's potentially fatal. Mm. So we see it as very positive. Just a quickie on Fano or I've only got a couple of minutes left, but from a policing perspective, um, how do you envisage it will be applied in practice in Canterbury and what role have the police got to play? Well, what, one thing we can do is we can highlight problems. So, for example, if we have a particular individual or um, a family, Fano, for example, that 
is off the rails, often we find that not only will they be committing offences or be the subject of family violence calls, but they'll also have issues around health, around education, around employment. Mm. So the concept, as I understand it, is whānau ora will, will involve a wraparound service where all um, agencies will be looking at what they can, can contribute to a sustainable um, solution to the problems. Now to some degree we've already got something similar happening which is term priority offenders where we have specific individuals within the community who police work with as well as housing, child youth and family in some cases, work and income. So to some degree we've started to um, go down that track and it's highly successful. Um, the individuals are engaging with us and the other agencies and they're not offending, they are staying in employment. So the, the early indications are very positive. Fantastic. Tagging. I saw a, a story in the press that claims that less than 2% of all tagging offences are reported to the police. If I've got a tag on my fence tomorrow morning, do you want to know about it? Yeah, what we've done with the Christchurch City Council, we've, we have a tag line. So if you ring the Christchurch City Council, you can report it to them. They'll then arrange for someone to come and paint it out and deal with it and record um, where and when it's happened and photograph it. Mm. That allows us to have a very good database so that where we get um, the same tag, for example, appearing in a whole lot of different locations, if we locate the offender, we can then attribute all those tags to that individual, which is quite important for us. So, mm. And the short answer is yes, we do want you to report it through that um, tagline in, this, in the council. Fantastic. 30 seconds left. Dave, what are the top priorities for you and your police officers this year? Uh, we're continuing down uh, the rostering to reduce demand um, process. Now we've centralised our rosters, we have more staff working at night when people call um, or want our services, we have more staff working at night walking the beat and being seen. Mm -hmm. That's a real priority for us, doing um, particularly around that visibility issue. And dealing with the scourge of alcohol remains my top crime generator and therefore one of my top priorities. Good stuff, always good to see you, thank you. Thank you. Dave Cliff, thanks for your company. Good night.